After 200 years, color shadow phenomenon finally solved. Why does magenta appear on the left side of the white cone? Before we begin, I'd like to share one of my favorite YouTube videos, created by Magic Hour Films many years ago, which has been a great source of inspiration and learning for me. After years of conducting my own experiments, I've come to believe that scientists and color theorists may need to rethink their interpretation. The color shadow of a white cone experiment has intrigued scientists and artists for centuries. This fascinating optical phenomenon, first explored in the 1800 by Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, examines the complex interplay between color perception, light, and shadow. Despite its historical roots, Goethe interpretation has been widely misunderstood, fueling debates among scientists and physicists that endure even today. We are used to thinking that these colors have something to do with the light. All cats look the same in the dark, we say. If the light disappears, the colors disappear. But if the darkness disappears, the colors disappear too. It's the light and the darkness together that create colors and render the world recognizable. In physics, colors can be measured, but colors possess other qualities and properties which cannot be measured, but which we sense immediately. When the sun rises in the east, we may have the good fortune to observe a very special phenomenon. For a moment, the orange-red light of the sun plays directly upon the cliff, and our shadows appear to be greenish-blue. These shadows are actually grey. Our eyes form the greenish-blue as a counter to the powerful orangish-red light. This simpler setup helps to show what really happens. We illuminate a cone, from the left at first with white light, then from the right with white light. There is now a grey shadow on each side of the cone. If we add a green filter to the left-hand lamp, the whole setup is bathed in green light, except for the part that is in the shade of the cone. This time, when we switch on the light on the right, which is still white, our vision creates a magenta shade where there is room for it, namely, in the grey shadow. If we zoom in until we can't see the surroundings anymore, but only the shadow itself, it stops looking magenta and turns grey again. If we view the shadow in isolation, it is grey. But when we see it in the context of which it is part, our vision invokes a magenta shade. Magenta is green's complementary color. As you can see, this video is beautiful, poetic, and very convincing. However, it misinterprets the idea by claiming that our vision creates the magenta shade, which cannot be measured. I used to accept this notion as true, but not anymore. In this video, we will unravel this enduring mystery, offering a clear explanation and quantifiable understanding through the groundbreaking lens of emerging colors theory, shedding new light on how it truly works. In this experiment, we use red, blue, and green light on the left side of the cone instead of the single white light shown previously. This setup allows us to explore how magenta emerges on the left side of the cone, showcasing the fascinating principles of emerging colors theory. Let's start with the basics of white light. White light is composed of three primary additive colors, red, green, and blue. When combined, these wavelengths create what we perceive as white light. In this setup, the cone is illuminated by overlapping RGB light sources, blending to form the central white region. But notice the edges of the cone's shadow. Here, the RGB light sources don't fully overlap revealing distinct regions of red, green, and blue. This creates a colorful halo effect, 
a vibrant interplay of light and shadow. Now, focus on the shadowed region. While it may seem neutral at first, it's far from simple. Let's us demonstrating the dynamic interaction of light and color in shadowed spaces. This interaction becomes even more intricate when a green light source is added to the right side of the cone. Here, we see green dominance in areas amplified by the additional green light. Yellow regions where green and red light overlap. And magenta hues where green light is absent, allowing red and blue to take over. Why does magenta disappear when zoomed in? Scientists and color theorists argue that magenta is an illusion created by the brain and cannot be measured. In this scene, we will prove that magenta is real and quantifiable. Here's a simple analogy to explain the elusive magenta color shadow. Imagine a large white box. If magenta light shines on the box, it appears magenta from the outside. But step inside the box, and the magenta vanishes. That's because magenta exists only in the interaction of light with the surface not within the box itself. Similarly, in this cone experiment, magenta emerges dynamically through the interaction of light wavelengths and shadow. Why does magenta disappear when zoomed in the shadow FO the cone? It's all about context. The magenta in the shadow emerges from the interplay of light wavelengths and surrounding colors. When you isolate red and blue wavelength that made magenta from the shadow, the dynamic interaction is lost and the shadow appears gray. In conclusion, for centuries, the traditional explanation of magenta dismissed it as an illusion, a trick of the brain. Emerging colors theory challenges this view, redefining magenta as a real optical phenomenon. It shows us that colors like magenta are not illusions but context-dependent effects created by light and shadow. This revolutionary perspective bridges the gap between perception and physical optics, deepening our understanding of light and color. With this new understanding, literally, we will never see our colorful world the same way again. Allow me to end this chapter with a quote. To truly see is to close the door of one's own perception and open a new door. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.